Hello and welcome to this first look exploring session, uh, looking at the insatiate countess and the original printing uh, gives it uh, authorship written by John Marston. More of that can be discussed uh, on Thursday when we come to our, our, our third session down the line. Uh, I'm not going to give you too much information about this. It's from the early 16th century, uh, 1608 through to 11 ish. Um, and uh, yes, acted at Whitefriars, as it says on the on the printing uh, from 1631. Uh, we are going to be reading through the first sort of third of the play, finding out how how it functions, getting a sense of uh, whether it works for us today or whether it uh, it needs uh, needs any work or adjustments. The only editorial intervention that has been made on this text is to try and formalise uh, names. There are variations in the text as you go along between names. Uh, we have broadly speaking followed uh, what the uh, Oxford World Classics version has done, um, but uh, other variations uh, are available and I may not have been as consistent in my uh, working of it. Certainly we haven't added any uh, or uh, any additional stage directions or editorial apparatus to our readings. So it may not match the version that you're looking at at home if you are following on at home um, as we try and sort of tidy up this text and figure out what mm -hmm. we want to do with it. Um, reading along uh, the text today, a reading Mendoza, because we've never had a Mendoza in a play uh, ascribed to John Marston before is... Hello, my name is Lynn. I live in the Northwestern United States. I am a, a teacher during the uh, the academic year. Uh, reading Abigail today is... <clears throat> oh, I, I, me, I'm uh, <laughs> Helen Good. I'm, I, I'm uh, a historian in Hull and I'm too inattentive. Sorry. Uh, well, no, everyone's used to having uh, more than one part. Uh, we've actually got quite a full room, so most people only have one part to read. And so when I stop so abruptly, it's confusing. However, someone who has more than one part to read today, reading Servant, Cardinal and Anna is... Brian Sparrow, actor in Lincolnshire. Uh, reading Rogero today is... <clears throat> Francis Cox, actor coming at you from Amsterdam. Uh, reading Roberto is... Hi, I'm Eric, and I don't want to be killed by Robert, so I will be very, very um, quiet unless I'm reading. That, that makes it sound like the before we go to record session is 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 full of threats and violence, uh, which of course it is. Uh, reading Isabella is... A leaky chapel actor in Lancashire. Uh, reading Lady Lentulus is... That is me, Rachel Nicole, actor in New Jersey. Uh, reading Clara Diana is... Both Potter, retired academic in London. Uh, reading Guido is... Hello, I'm Samara, actress currently in Germany. Uh, reading Ms. Aldous is... Hi, Alan Scott, based in Suffolk. And reading Thais today is... Hi, my name's Elizabeth Amisu, and I'm an author based in Romford. And I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I'll be reading stage directions and occasionally throwing random interjections in as well and trying to keep the room generally moving forward. So there is uh, no... Uh, noted prologue uh, or, or uh, introductory material uh, that has survived anyway. So we dive straight into uh, the text and uh, there's a discovery space uh, intimated here. Isabella, uh, Isabella, the Countess of Suevia is discovered uh, sitting at a table uh, covered uh, with black uh, on which stands two black tapers are lighted. She is in morning, enter variously Roberto, uh, Guido, Rogero, and Mazaldus, etc. What should we do in this Countess Dark Hole? She sullenly retired as the turtle. Every day has been a black day with her since her husband died. And what should we unruly members make here? As melancholy night masks up heaven's face, so doth the evening star present herself unto the shepherds, unto the, unto the careful shepherd's gladsome eyes, by which unto the fold he leads, leads his flock. Zooms, what a sheepish beginning is here. Tis said true love is simple, and it may well hold, and thou art a simple lover. 
See how yon star, like beauty in a cloud, illumines darkness and beguiles the moon of all her glory in the firmament. Well said, man in the moon, was ever such astronomers. Marry, I fear none of these will fall into the right ditch. Madam? Huh? Anna? What are my doors unbarred? I'll show you the way into your ladyship is open. And God defend that any profane hand should offer sacrilege to such a saint. Lovely Isabella, by this duteous kiss that draws part of my soul along with it, had I but thought my rude intrusion had waked the dove-like spleen harbored within you. Life in my firstborn should not satisfy such a transgression worthy of a check, but that immortals wink at my offense makes me presume more boldly. I am come to raise you from this so infernal cypher sadness. My lord of Cyprus, do not mock my grief. Tears are as due a tribute to the dead as fear to God and duty unto kings, love to the just, or hate unto the wicked. Sir Cease, believe it is a wrong unto the gods. They sail against the wind that wail the dead, and since his heart hath wrestled with death's pangs, from whose stern cave none tracts a backward path, leave to lament this necessary change, and thank the gods, for they can give us good. I wail his loss. Sink him ten cubits deeper, I may not fear his resurrection. I will be sworn, upon the holy writ, I mourn thus fervent, cause he died no sooner. He buried me alive, and mewed me up like Cretan Daedalus, and with walleye jealousy kept me from hope of any waxen wings to fly to pleasure. But now his soul, her Argus eyes, have closed, and I am free as air. You of my sex, in the first flow of youth, use you the sweets due to your proper beauties, ere the ebb and long wane of unwelcome change shall come. Fair women, play! She's chased whom none will have. Here's a man of most mild aspect, temperate, effeminate, and worthy love. One that with burning ardour hath pursued me. A donative he have of every god. Apollo gave him locks. Joe, his high front. The god of eloquence, his flowing speech. The feminine deities strewed all their bounties and beauty on his face. That eye was Juno's. Those lips were hers that won the golden ball. That virgin blush, Diana's. Here they meet as in a sacred synod. Uh, my lords, I must entreat a while your wished forbearance. We obey, lady. And exeunt <laughs> Rogero and Guido, leaving Isabella and Roberto. My lord, with you I have some conference. I, I pray, my lord, do you woo every lady in this phrase you do me? Fairest, till now love was an infant in my oratory. And kiss thus, too. I never was so kissed. Leaves thus to please, flames into seas, seas, flames into flames, seas thou pourest into seas. Pray frown, my lord. Let me see how many wives you'll have. Oh, hey, oh you'll bury me, I see. In the swans down, entomb thee in mine arms. Then folk shall pray in vain to send me rest. Away, you're such another meddling lord. By heaven, my love's as chaste as thou art fair, and both exceed comparison. By this kiss that crowns me monarch of another world, superior to the first, fair thou shalt see, as unto heaven my love, so unto thee. Alas, poor creatures, when we are once of the falling hand, a man may easily come over us. It is as hard for us to hide our love as to shut sin from the Creator's eyes. If faith, my lord, I had a month's mind unto you, as tedious as a full ripe maidenhead, and... Count of Cyprus, <clears throat> think my love as pure as the first opening of the blooms in May. A virtuous man, nay, let me not blush to say so, and see, for your sake, thus I leave to sorrow, begin this subtle conjuration with me, and as this taper due unto the dead I here extinguish, so my late dead lord I put out ever from my memory that his remembrance may not wrong our love. Around about here, puts out the taper. 
as bold-faced women when they wed another, banquet their husbands with their dead loves' heads. And as I sacrifice this to his ghost, with this expire all corrupt thoughts of youth, that fame insatiate devil jealousy, and all the sparks that may bring unto flame hate betwixt man and wife were breed to fame. And uh, we can assume more tapering is uh, occurring. Um, Re-enter Guido and Rogero. Mary, amen. I say, madam, are you that were in for all day, now come to be in for all night? How now, Car Count Arsena? Hey, senor, not unlike the condemned malefactor that hears his judgment openly pronounced, but I ascribe to fate, joy swell your love, cypress and willow grace my drooping crest. We do intend our hymeneal rites with the next rising sun. Count Arsena, next to our bride, the welcomes to our feast. And exuant Isabella and Roberto. Sancta Maria, what, think, what thinkst thou of this change? A player's passion I'll believe hereafter, and in a tragic, <clears throat> and in a tragic scene weep for old Priam, when fell revenging Pyrrhus with supposed and artificial wounds mangles his breast, and think it a more worthy act to me than trust a female mourning or her love. Naught that is done of woman shall please me, nature's stepchildren, rather her disease. Learn of a well-composed epigram, a woman's love, and thus twas sung unto us. The tapest that stood on her husband's hearse, Isabel advances to a second bed. Is it not wondrous strange for to rehearse? She should so soon forget her husband, dead, one hour. For if the husband's life once fade, both love and husband in one grave are laid. But we forget ourselves. I am for the marriage of Signor Clary Diana and the fine mistress Abigail. I for his arch foe's wedding. Signor Rogero and the spruce mistress ties, but see, the solemn rites are ended, and from their several temples they are come. A quarrel on my life. Yes, and we'll get to the quarrel in a moment. Um, yes, so we've got some mourning. Um, uh, Isabella's in mourning, and uh, and Roberto comes in, um, and. Uh, and stuff moves uh, in in a different direction. Uh, thoughts from this opening of a play? Uh, it'd be really interesting to see if uh, you know to to have known what kind of additional opening opening material might have uh, 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 gone with this. Uh, but uh, this is what we've got. Um, we've been we've got quite used to having prologues and inductions to tell us what the tone is, mm -hmm. uh, or at least give us some 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 hint of where we're going. Uh, thoughts from the room, Rachel. Uh, what is a taper? Candle. Hmm. Yeah. So the the, the illumination that uh, the the room is getting darker as they uh, they they conclude their scene. Uh, Eric, wasn't there? A I feel like you know, uh, Marston might be referring back to himself. I don't know if um, the malcontent is before this or after this because. I remember there was a reference to sort of the whole black candles again, uh, you know, when you put out the candle sort of black and the wall behind it will go black kind of thing because of the smoke. Uh, possibly. I mean, I, I felt that the, the mangle thing, uh, the mangle thing, the the, uh, the candle thing uh, was was more about um, let's make this place darker uh, so that we can do fun things. Uh, but I might have been misreading that because I have a dirty mind. Um, thoughts in the room, Aliki? I mean, I think the dirty mind is invited. Here we are in the Countess's dark hall and the way to her ladyship is open. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, um, and and you know, but that that a lot of this is being said by various people and figures around the room, and and so it's a really interesting question of 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 uh, who's setting up this this stage picture for us as well, as well as uh, what's going on with Is Isabella. How much of that long speech is an aside, uh, yeah. and how is who's that too? Because it's it's not note. I don't think the original is marked that way. Um, uh, some editions have marked. Uh, aside in there, um, but uh, it definitely feels like some of that's private and some of that isn't. Uh, Lynn, yeah, that was what I was wondering myself. Is is the speech that begins "I wail his loss"? 
How much of that is to the audience? And aside, is she actually speaking to Roberto? And is mm. it I wail his loss? <laughs> right. Or is it I wail his loss? And then you turn aside, sink him 10 cubits deeper that I may not fear his resurrection. Yeah. So that's something for an actor to, to play with. And um, so, and speaking of the candles, if this was performed indoors, then the... Um, snuffing the candles would actually have made the stage darker. It's not mm -hmm. like when you're an outdoor playhouse and you're pretending you have candles or you come out with torches, but it doesn't matter because it's two o'clock in the afternoon and full daylight. So it would have actually been a lighting effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rachel, again, I think I saw a uh, waving hand. Other thoughts on the room? Um, anyone want to leave in? Ra anything from Rachel? No, uh, just about no. That I withdraw, withdraw. <laughs> okay. Um. So we get it's 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 painting as a scene. Uh, we're getting into plot straight away. It's not hanging about, is it? You know, uh, dead husband, quite like you. Um. And um. Yeah. It's it's moving on. And then we have this interruption because of course the scene is not over. Um. We've got some some people bursting in. Um. And yes. Yeah, so let's let's. Oh, Lois. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Um. When, when Rogero and uh, Guido come back, they obviously know that uh, <laughs> she's going to marry Roberto, or at any rate, there must be some a really a real clinch or something happening at that point, presumably. I mean, then, then Rogero says he's going to wear the willow, which is, I suppose everybody knows means the, the rejected lover wears willow uh, to show he's in mourning for his lost love. But they must be, I mean, she and uh, Roberto must really be doing something fairly uh, unmistakable at that point. <laughs> mm. uh, okay, uh, Eric. I was just wondering, is it sort of suggested that Roberta is a lot younger? Or is it just like, the, cause, or she's a lot older because uh, there is that thing of, you know, you're, you're going to bury me and then he goes, oh no, no of course not, I'll just, you know, whatever. Mm, sort of good. glosses over it. Well, it's a good question as to uh, what what the age range of the characters are actually, and whether we get more clues as to because um, that's a practical casting question. Uh, Helen. Yeah, and also, how many wives has Roberto buried? I, I, I mean, burying wives was not unusual, but one wonders just how many there have been. Mm. Uh, mm. A leaky. Now, you... I, I'm inclined to go with Eric's guess that he's a much younger man and that she will be the first wife he buries. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, Lynn. Oh, I was going to say, not necessarily in this in this period, women, young widows were not uncommon. I, I'm thinking of something that I think a little later in this period, Duchess of Malfi, which was based on a, a historical event she was 19 when she was widowed her husband was significantly older than she was and uh and died within a couple of years of, of her being married so she could be quite young her husband could have been significantly older than she so it's not necessarily kind of a cougar scenario here at all mm. Yes, uh, and those those questions also about uh, d different societies' uh, viewpoints on this on uh, over time. Uh, Eric, well, also another example we have like well, probably earlier than this. I'm guessing I don't know like Tancred and Gismunda, where Gismunda is um, widowed already at the start of the play, and she seems quite young based on what we've. So sort of, mm. I don't know she doesn't seem very old based on the whole, you know. Um, yeah, people people just what randomly in the play. <laughs> yeah, people, people randomly die. Um, that's that's uh, that's that's how the early modern really really works. Uh, 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 anyway, we'll we'll move on. Uh, just a note uh, for one of the earlier lines because we're going to have these moments where uh, rationalising who is who uh, may occasionally have gone wrong. So I for his arch rivals, uh, arch foes' wedding, Signor Mesoldus and the spruce mistress Theus uh, should have been the line there right. within this new uh, reading. There may be more of those coming up. Um, uh, hold, hold on to your confusions. They're perfectly reasonable. Uh, okay, stage direction as the quarrel enters. Enter at one door, Signor Clara Diana, Abigail, his wife, the Lady Lentulus, 
uh, with rosemary as from a church. At the other door, uh, enter uh, Signor Mesoldus uh, and uh, there's his wife. Uh, we have Mendoza um, uh, uh, from the bridal uh, entering as well. Uh, they see one another uh, and they draw their swords and uh, Roger, Rogero and Guido step between them. Good, my lord, detain me not. I will tilt at him. Remember, sir, this is your wedding day, and that triumph belongs only to your wife. If you be noble, let me cut off his head. Remember, on the other side, you have a maiden head of your own to cut off. I'll make my marriage day light to the bloody bridal of Alcides by the fiery centres hour. Husband, dear husband. Away with these caterwaulers. Come on, sir. Thou son of a Jew. Alas, poor wench, thy husband's been circumcised. Begot when thy father's face was toward the east to show that thou wouldst prove a caterpillar. His messiah shall not save thee from me. I'll send thee to him in collops. Oh, fry not in cooler so, sir. Mountebank with thy pedantical action. Rheumatrix, Bugos, Rhinoceros. Gentlemen, I conjure you by the virtues of men. Shall any broken quacksilver's bastard oppose him to me in my nuptials? No, but I'll show him better metal than e'er the galley morphly his father used. Thou scum of his melting pots that were christened in the crusoe oil with mercury's water show thou wouldst prove a stinging aspis. For all thou spiritus, spittus is aqua fortis, and thy breath is composed of poison still a tree. I get within thee, hadst thou the very scaly hide of a crocodile, as thou art partly of his nature, I would leave thee as bare as an anatomy at the second viewing. Thou Jew of the tribe of Gad, that I were sure that were there none here but thou and I, wouldst teach me the art of breathing, thou wouldst run like a dromedary. Thou art that art the tallest man of Christendom when thou art alone. Thou dost maintain this to my face, I'll make thee skip like an ounce. Nay, good sir, be you still. Let that quacksilver's son be still. His father was still and still and still again. By the Almighty, I'll study negromancy, but I'll be revenged. Gentlemen, leave these dissensions. Signor Ruggiero, you are a man of worth. <laughs> True. All the city points at him for a knave. You are of a like reputation, Signor Claridiana. The hatred to which your grandsires first began. Impute it to the folly of that age. These, your dissensions, may erect a faction like to the Capulets and the Montagues. Put it to equal arbitration. Choose your friends. The senators will think them happy in it. I'll ne'er embrace the smoke of a furnace, the quintessence of mineral or simples, or as I may say more learnedly, not the spirit of Quicksilver. Nor I, such a centaur, Half a man, half an ass, and all a Jew. Nay, then, we will be constables and force a quiet. Gentlemen, keep him asunder and help to persuade him. And exuant at one door, Misordus and uh, Clara Diana, and at the other, uh, 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 Guido and Rogero, uh, leaving various people on stage. Well, ladies, your husbands behave them as lustily on their wedding day as e'er I heard any. Nay, Lady Widow, you and I must have a falling. You're of Signor Misaldus' faction, and I am your vowed enemy, from the vodka to the pin case. Hark in your ear. Well, Thais, oh, you're a cunning carver. We too, that any time these 14 years have called sisters, Brought and bred up together, we have told one another all our wanton dreams, talked all night long of young men, and spent many an idle hour fastened upon the stones on St Agnes' night together, practised all the petulant amorousness that delights young maids, yet have you concealed not only the marriage, but the man. 
And well, you might deceive me, for I'll be sworn you never dreamed of him. And it stands against all reason that you should enjoy him that you never dreamed of. Is not all this the same in you? Did you ever manifest your sweetheart's nose that I might nose him by it? Commended his car for his never lip? Apparent signs that you were not in love or wisely covered it? Have you ever said such a man goes upright or has a better gait than any of the rest? As indeed, since he has proved a magnifico, I thought thou wouldst have put it into my hands, whatever it had been. Well, wench, we have cross fates. Our husbands such inveterate foes and we such entire friends. But the best is we are neighbours and our back arbours may afford visitation freely. Prithee, let us maintain our familiarity still, whatsoever thy husband do unto thee, as I am afraid he will cross it in the nick. Faith, you little one, if I please him in one thing, he shall please me in all, that's certain. Who shall I have to keep my counsel if I miss thee? Who shall teach me to use the bridle when the reins are in my own hand? What to long for? When to take physic? Where to be melancholy? Why, we two are one another's grounds, without which we would, would be no music. Well said, wench, and the prick song we shall use, we use shall be our husbands. I will long for swine's flesh, O oh, the first child. Wilt thou, little Jew, and I to kiss thy husband upon the least belly ache, this will madam. I kiss thee, wench, for that, and with it, confirm our friendship. By these sweet lips, widow. Good my lord, learn to swear by rote. Your birth and fortune makes my brain suppose that, like a man heated with wines and lust, she that is next your object is your mate till the foul water have quenched out the fire. You, the Duke's kinsman, tell me I am young, fair, rich, and virtuous. I myself will flatter, myself, till you are gone that are more fair, more rich, more virtuous, and more debonair, all which are ladders to an ire reach. Who drinks a puddle that may taste a spring? who kiss a subject that may hug a king. Yes, the camel always drinks in puddle water. And as for huggings, read antiquities. Faith, madam, I'll board thee one of these days. I, but ne'er bed me, my lord. My vow is firm, since God hath called me to this noble state. Much to my grief, a virtuous widowhood, no man shall ever come within my gates. Wilt thou ram up thy porch hold? O oh, widow, I perceive you're ignorant of the lover's leisure domain. There is a fellow that by magic will assist to murder princes invisible. I can command his spirit. Or uh, what say you to a fine scaling ladder of ropes? I can tell you I am a, ma I am a mad wag halter. But by the virtue I see seated in you, and by the worthy fame is blazoned of you, by little Cupid that is mighty named and can command my looser follies down, I love and must enjoy, yet with such limits as one that knows enforced marriage to be the Fury's sister. Think of me. <laughs> <laughs> How now, lady, does the toy take you, as they say? No, my lord, nor do we take your toy, as they say. This is a child's birth that must not be delivered before a man, though your lordship might be a midwife for your chin. Some body riddle is not you long till it be night? No, my lord, women's longing comes after their marriage night. Sister, see you be constant now. Why, dost think I'll make my husband a cuckold? Oh, here they come. Enter at several doors, Ms. Aldous, with... Uh, oh, no, sorry, it is not... Um, it's, oh, yes, it is. Okay. Um, 
Yes, uh, we have uh, several doors. Uh, Mazordas, Claridine, uh, Diana, Guido, Rogero, etc. Mendoza meets with them. Senor Rogero, are you yet qualified? Yes, does any man think I'll go like a sheep to the slaughter? Hands off, my lord. Your lordship may chance come under my hands. If you do, I shall show myself a citizen and revenge basely. I think if I were receiving the Holy Sacrament, his sight would make me gnash my teeth terribly. But there's the beauty without parallel in whom the graces and the virtues meet. In her aspect, mild honor sits and smiles, and who looks there were it the savage bear but would derive new nature from her eyes. But to be reconciled simply for him were mankind to be lost again, I'd let it, and a new heap of stones should stock the world. In heaven and earth, this power beauty hath. It inflames temperance and temperates wrath. Whate'er thou art, mine art thou, wise or chaste. I shall set hard upon thy marriage vow and write revenge high in thy husband's brow in a strange character. You may begin, sir. Signor Caridiana, I hope Signor Ruggiero thus employed me about a good office. For worthy Cicero's tongue, a famous oration now, but friendship that is mutually embraced of the gods and is Jove's usher to each sacred synod, without the which he could not reign in heaven, that overgoes my admiration shall not undergo my censure. These hot flames of rage that else will be as fire midst your nuptial jollity, burning the edge off from the present joy and keep you wake to terror. I have not yet swallowed the Rimatrix nor the Onocentaur. The rhinoceros was monstrous. Sir, be you of the more flexible nature and confess an error. I must. The gods of love command and that bright star, her eye that guides my fate. Signor, uh, I think this is Misaldus I'm talking to, isn't it? Signor Misaldus, joy then, Signor Misaldus. Signor, sir, oh devil. Good husband, show yourself a temperate man. Your mother was a woman, I dare swear. No tiger got you, nor no bear was rivaled in your conception. You seem like the issue the painter's limb, leaping from envy's mouth that devours all he meets. Had the last or the least syllable of this more than immortal eloquence commenced to me when rage had been so high within my blood that it o'ertop my soul, like to the lion when he hears the sound of Diane's bowstring in some shady wood, I should have couched my lowly limb on earth and held my silence a proud sacrifice. Slave. I will fight with thee at any odds, or name an instrument fit for destruction that e'er was made to make away a man. I'll meet thee on the ridges of the Alps or some inhospitable wilderness, stark naked, at push of pike or clean kirtle axe, at Turkish sickle, Babylonian saw, the ancient hooks of great Cadwallader, or any other heathen invention. Oh, God bless the man. Counsel him, good my lord. Our tongues are weary and he is desperate. He does refuse to hear. What shall we do? I'm not mad. I can hear, I can see, I can feel. But a wise, raged man, wronged past compare, should be well nourished, as his virtues are. I'd have it known unto each valiant sprite, he wrongs no man that to himself does right. Catso, I've done. Signor Rogero, I've done. By heaven, this voluntary reconciliation, made freely and of itself, argues unfeigned, and uh, argues unfeigned and virtuous not of love. So, sirs, embrace. Sir, by the conscience of a Catholic man, and by our mother church that binds and doth atone in amity with God, the souls of men, that they be, they with men be one, I tread into the centre all the thoughts of ill in me toward you and memory of what from you might ought disparage me, wishing unfeignedly it may sink low 
and as untimely births want power to grow. Christianly said, Signor, what would you have more? And so I swear, your honest honor centaur. Hey, see now, <laughs> oh, your turbulent spirit. Did he do it in this form? Ah, if you think not this sufficient, you shall command me to be reconciled in another form, as a rimatrix or a rhinoceros. Blood, what will you do? Ah, give me your hands first. I am friends with you of faith. Thereupon I embrace you, uh, kiss your wife, and God give us joy. You mean me and my husband? Ah, you take the meaning better than the speech, lady. Like wish I, but ne'er can be the like. And therefore wish I thee. By this bright light that is derived from thee. So, sir, you make me a very light creature. But that thou art a blessed angel sent down from the gods to atone mortal men, I would have thought deeds beyond all men's thoughts and executed more upon his courts. Hmm. Oh, let him thank the beauty of this eye and not his resolute swords or destiny. What sayest thou, Miss Aldous? Come, applaud this jubilee, a day these hundred years before not truly known to these divided factions. No, nor this day had it been falsely born, but that I mean to sound it with his horn. I like there, actually, I'm just going to pause uh, before we go in. Um, uh, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I mean that way. Um, okay, so we've got two wedding parties. Um, neither of which really like the other very much, but a reconcilement has been has been reached. Don't you just hate it when you book the same the same space? Um, I don't think that's literally what's happened. But, you know, it, it does have that sort of quality to it. Um, and yeah, that we have these sort of uh, forced reconciliation between the two and a suggestion that things might get worse. Some yeah. worse things might have. Um, yeah. So, thoughts on the room? Uh, I'll go to Lois. Yeah, well, I hope I've got this right, but it seems to me that a lot of what Claudia Dion is saying is aside and that he's uh, he's actually in love with the other guy's wife and that he's playing a cuckold him uh, as revenge, but that he's pretending to be reconciled. But I don't understand this bit about rimatrixes and so on. I mean, is he... <laughs> Is he saying that he's reconciled to him as if he were a rhinoceros, but not as he's a human being or something? I mean, it's kind of like that. Uh, anyone want to jump in on the rhinoceros stuff? Because I was a bit lost myself. Uh, Aliki. This is just a guess, but is this all to do with one or the other's father having been an alchemist and maybe um, rhinoceros horn being an ingredient in spells along with all the quicksilver stuff? Uh, I'm a bit lost, too. Yeah, there's yeah. there's various bits in there which sound like they could be that kind of that kind of language is mixed in with rhinoceros and the, the rhinoceros is the ultimate absurd end of of various terms. Um, yeah, yes, it's very odd. I mean, uh, this whole there's apparently a backstory somewhere, uh, but uh, but it's not really explained. Mm, yeah, we don't quite get a sense of why they're having this Barney in quite so explicit terms. You know, it's just they, they, they meet, they have an argument. And, and yes, there are lots of asides embedded here about plotting to sleep with each other's wives um, behind various backs. So uh, nice people, nice people. I'll go to Helen, then Alan. Um, I got the impression that the rhinoceros was being treated as if it was a, the equivalent in uh likelihood to exist with the centaur mm -hmm. you know that the the i mean we think of a rhino rhinoceros and the centaur as completely different types of creature as in one having real one being real and the other not but it certainly sounded to me as if they were all being treated as the same thing but the thing that i wanted to ask was um the chappy who begins with an M, who Misaldus mm. is not Jewish. He keeps on getting called mm. a Jew, but yeah. he isn't. I mean, he makes suddenly goes into this tremendously Christian speech mm. by the conscience of a Catholic man and by our mother church, mm. um, obviously emphasizing his non Jewishness, but yet. Uh, uh, 
the, 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 when the two women are speaking, uh, Abigail says to um, Tatharan, who is married to Ms. Aldous, or about to be married to Ms. Aldous, ah, my little Jewess. Yeah. Mm. I can figure out why there are so many references to Jews in this. Yeah, there's there's so much so much going on there, and uh, is it that they've uh, that you know that they have converted, and that there's there's some other th things going on here, and that that is 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 functioning on a racial level, or is it that it's just it is an insult that they are using um, in the way the logic of the play is functioning? There's a lot of stuff which for a modern audience that this needs to we need to have a very firm line on uh, mm. what we do with this sequence because it does leap out and slap you in the face in quite a quite an overt way um and um yeah i'm not sure what the play is doing with this yet before you can actually start de deciding how you're going to deal with it which is sort of the big problem uh lynn then tamara yeah I, I sort of a, I have a, an array of random things yeah the 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 question of whether or not the, the um Ms. Aldous's Jewishness is is literal. He might be a converso. There were um, mm. there were plenty of uh, Jewish people who converted, or at least uh, outwardly converted to Christianity in order to um, stay in the Iberian Peninsula during this period. So that might be literal. I don't know. That's very strange. Um, and I just wanted to say, I didn't actually see Quicksilver. It's Quacksalver, which is different. It's a, it's, it's a person. It's a, it's a quack. It's a, it's a fake doctor. So, um, I, so yeah, maybe one of their fathers was this kind of mountebank fake doctor um, quack. I, I don't know. It does seem like there's a lot of backstory that. Uh, that we are that we're it's being hinted at that that we don't really understand. But what I was going to say originally is like this is very much like your American soap opera kind of thing. The women are best friends and the men are mortal enemies, and so the, we're going to see how that affects the women's friendship. Um, like when one of them's husband seduces her, I, <laughs> how is that going to how is that going to shake out? Mm. Mm, yes, uh, I, uh, and that's the yeah. The, what's going on with relationships? What? Uh, how are everybody interconnected? Um, that's something a production really needs to sort of get its head around. So actually, communicate. Uh, yeah, uh, Tamara, and then Francis. I didn't have anything deep and insightful to say except that I too am confused about the mention of Jewishness all the time because. Initially, when it happened, I thought, oh, well, there goes, our, uh, you know, the anti-Semite uh, bingo for our early modern drama. But it kept coming up when the girls were talking as well. So I'm a yeah. bit by that. And it's the way it's being used in slightly different frames, you know, as something that's just a matter of fact about uh, about a friend and an insult hurled uh, by an enemy. Um, so there's there's interesting structural questions about what this society is doing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm confused. I'm I'm having a problem figuring out who's married to whom, and um, uh, from one minute to the next, and. Um, I was wondering though the reference to Ms. Aldous is being a Jew. I just wondered if that had anything to do with his profession. Was he, uh, you know, uh, does he have anything to do with money lending or finance or something? Mm. Is it playing with a with a trope on that level? Um, I've got a note here that uh, you know, uh, you know, it, that, that there are professions being played as well as people being counts and countesses. So there is a cross section of society going on here. We have people in the upper echelons and then people are, shall we say, in trade. Yeah. So the way that that plays, um, so we could say we've got an A plot that is following a sort of court dynamic and a B plot that is uh, slightly further down the social ladder, but uh, who do interact with each other. 
um, and that that might that might have a uh, something to be played. So yes, we've got Miss Aldous uh, and his wife Thais. We've got Clara Diana and his wife Abigail. And it is there is some confusion in the room, which is partly my fault because uh, even though I did manage to tidy up most of the names to make them consistent, I failed several times. So every so often, someone's saying the wrong name, which I can appreciate does not make it easier for you to read the play. I uh, it should tidy itself out when we get into act two three um because of the nature of the text um but that's not a promise i'm going to be very vigilant uh rachel i have a question about um alchemy um when does that begin to become um debunked and is it being debunked around this time period and that's why they're referring to it in this way? Sorry, uh, uh, Helen, take that up. Uh, I would say that alchemy is just about getting into its stride. Uh, Isaac Newton spent probably more time on alchemy than he did on what we now think of as regular science. Uh, it was, alchemy was big and there was an enormous amount of money in it if you uh, if people believed you and far too often they did mm. uh other thoughts um eric i was gonna put this in the chat but anyway uh, uh since we're talking about it, alchemy is also like as far as i know um not just the whole you know turning stuff into gold thing it was also a whole philosophy that went with like, you know, the natural elements and stuff and, you know, astronomy and that kind of thing. It, but it, so, you know, uh, alchemy was, yeah, um, might have been uh, a philosophy they adhered to. Uh, Helen. Yeah, it was a moment when nobody really knew what was going to turn out well and what was not. I mean, Francis Bacon died trying to prove the value of refrigeration by <laughs> stuffing a dead chicken with snow. And he caught something, caught, caught a chill and died of it, died for science. But he didn't know that this property of cold was any different from properties which would actually transmute metals. So the, the, the two professions, science and um, alchemy were, I mean, alchemy becomes chemistry. It's the same word. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and at this point, uh, there are charlatans, yes, but there's also an awful lot of people who, who take it really seriously, who otherwise are serious scientists. Uh, yes. Uh, any other thoughts before we finish the scene? Because we haven't technically finished it. I sort of stopped, paused mid-moment. Um, and uh, we'll go forward then if I see nobody waving at me, which I do not. So uh, we have this sort of reconciliation, but possibly lots of asides about <laughs> I'll get people. Uh, and we left them with Guido and Rogero talking to each other. I like the former jar better than they showed like men and soldiers. Now, like cowards and lectures. Well said, Ms. Aldous. Thou art like the bass viol in a concert. Let other instruments wish and delight in your highest sense. Thou art still grumbling. A sweet receive it and it my heart. And when thou readst a moving syllable, think that my soul was secretary to it. It is your love and not the odious wish my revenge in styling him a cuckold makes me presume thus far then read it fair my beauties my passions ample as your beauties are well sir we will not stick with you and gentlemen since it hath happed so fortunately i do entreat we may all meet tomorrow in some heroic mask to grace the nuptials of the most noble count of cyprus who does the young Count marry? Oh, sir, who but the very heir of all her sex that bears the palm of beauty from them all? 
Others, compared to her, show like faint stars to the full moon of wonder in her face. The Lady Isabella, the late widow to the deceased and noble Viscount Hermas. La, you there, widow. There's one of the last edition whose husband yet retains in his cold trunk some little airing of his noble guest. Yet she, a fresh bride, as the month of May. Well, my lord, I am none of these that have my second husband bespoke. My door shall be a testimony of it, and but these noble marriages incite me, my much abstracted presence should have showed it. If you come to me, hark in your ear, my lord, look your ladder of ropes be strong, for I shall tie you to your tackling. Gentlemen, your answer to the mask. Your honor leads, we'll follow. Signor Claridiana. I attend you, sir. You'll be constant. And uh, uh, <clears throat> they all exit, and Claridiana manages to say the last line back to Theus. Above the adamant, the goat's blood shall not break me. Yet shallow fools and plainer moral men that understand not what they undertake fall in their own snares or come short of vengeance. No, let the sun view with an open face and afterward shrink in his blushing cheeks, ashamed and cursing of the fixed decree that makes his light bored to the crimes of men. When I have ended what I now devise, Apollo's oracle shall swear me wise. Strumpet his wife, branch my false seeming friend and make him foster what my hate begot a bastard that when age and sickness seize him shall be a corsive to his griping heart <laughs> i'll write to her for what her modesty will not permit nor my adulterate forcing that blushless herald shall not fear to tell misaldus shall know yet that his foes are man and what is more, a true Italian. And exit. Uh, so we have, as we go into the interval, uh, music plays, uh, assuming this is an uh, uh, indoor boys company uh, production. And um, yeah, we, uh, we have the promise of a mask. Masks always go well in plays, don't they? They're always a signifier <laughs> of something wonderful. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that, uh, that all goes. Um, so, yeah, we have the B plot referring to the A plot. Just to remind us, there's an A plot going on. Um, just just uh, st pay attention, people. Remember, there's there's two two tracks to this narrative uh, as we go forward. Um, thoughts in the room, Alan? I'm just wondering whether we're part of the confusion that we're getting. Most of the character names look to be four names, Christian names. Whereas uh, Ms. Ellis looks more like a surname. And I'm just wondering whether, in fact, it's a, a misattribution in the original script that Ms. Aldous is has a forename which is appearing elsewhere. In other words, there's one character more than we actually need. And I'm also very confused that he's actually addressed Claridiana as Signor um, when it seems throughout that she's been described as being female. No, no. No, Clavidiana is male. It's the no. husband. Um, that, that, that's definite. Uh, Don't the... get confused by it being read by Lois. Yes. No, it, it's, it's the A suffix on the names which mm. Mm. causes mm. bloody confusion every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, that is the correct name. Um, and yes, yeah, so the, the, there has been a say, uh, editorial uh, intervention in names, but um, it is a relatively straight swap throughout. It's, it's not that there is an additional part. Um, it's so uh, just because occasionally someone says the wrong name when talking to each other. So far, the speech prefixes have all been accurate within the logic of what we've been doing. Um, uh, 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 the speech prefixes were the easy bit. Uh, it's the, the <laughs> people saying dialogue where I got it wrong. Uh, Rachel. No, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. So maybe this is just my confusion. Um, 
but if they're saying different people's names in their you know text that they're saying to each other maybe it's they're speaking to one person and they're saying somebody else's name to include them into that conversation like isn't this right what i'm saying i might be confusing the conversation that we were just having and the because i am a little confused with this one yeah uh, there are a few confusions which I, I think there is a mixture there is a mixture of confusions one of which is uh, we've just entered a plot strand where people are talking to each other uh, using names which uh, are not wholly accurate um because they're they're slipping between the t uh, the texts as it were um but the other straightforward thing is i think it's actually quite confusing what's going on we've got two wedding parties who have an have an argument have a barney and then reconcile and they're talking to each other in quite weird ways that are not fully explicated i don't think you know four names being misattributed uh mm. in the dialogue is throwing us that much i think it's more that actually the uh the the, the text is uh, is not fully uh explicating what's going on though of course the visual dynamic should add that if you see two wedding parties enter and then start hitting each other with bouquets or something <laughs> you get a sense of what's going on pretty quickly uh aliki I think part of the confusion is also that quite a lot of this text seems to be asides. And I only kind of decided that by the time we were nearly done reading. Like, I wonder if more than half of what people are saying is not meant to be heard by the other characters. Yes, there aren't many uh, asides um, noted. Uh, even in fact, I've been uh, skipping through uh, other editions. Um, where you put them is is really debatable um and and so there's there's a lot that actually in play in a rehearsal room uh you might want to move around with uh yeah, there's Lois. also um uh Ms. Alda slips a note to clara diana's wife uh he tells her read it read it you know a couple of times that that must be what's going on mm -hmm. clara diana at the end of the scene says he's going to write a note to the other guy's wife uh you know obviously both saying i love you you know let's have an assignation somewhere um, but I mean, it's yes, it's incredibly complicated. And on top of that, you've got a third couple, Mendoza, who's sort of courting Lady Lentulus, mostly uh, silently, but occasionally coming forward in, in the gaps between the other people's arguments. So it's three couples altogether. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Lynn. In, in the B plot, if you don't count um, uh, Isabella and her intended, so. Yeah, this is making me kind of feel sad already because <laughs> um, it looks like the, you know, one of the real victims here is going to be the women's friendship. They used to be really close and tell each other all their secrets, but then they both say, so you married this guy and you never told me you were even interested in him. That's weird. So <laughs> I think that hints that neither Thais or Abigail is particularly smitten with the man she just married. Uh, if she didn't tell her best friend, oh, I met this guy and I think I'm going to marry him. He's so great. That didn't happen. So they, uh, I think that's, there's a hint that they are vulnerable to being seduced by their best friend's husband. It's just like, oh, this is not really very love positive, is it? <laughs> I'm feeling that might be that might be just that what you put underneath Marston so far, isn't it? Not very love positive. <laughs> um, <laughs> not a fan. Not a fan. Um, of which uh, we might have more to say uh, slightly further down the road. Uh, Rachel than Eric. Uh, to what Aliki said before, um, with the asides, I wonder if we and she also put it in the chat like a like these bedroom farces that um, I wonder if we have like false asides, these things where they're, you know, talking to the audience, but they're like, you know, looking at the person and the person overhears them and it's meant to be overheard by the other character on the stage, you know, and the character means that, but they're engaging the audience as a confidant while mm. meaning it, all of it to be overheard so that they can be welcomed into courting them or something like that and play that this little game yeah we've constantly had this problem you know it's not a problem it's dramatically very satisfying when performed uh with marston of who's talking to who, who are they talking to the audience and then are they lying <clears throat> 
And when you add all of those combinations together, um, what is a true statement becomes really, really tricky and, um, and something, you know, nicely for, uh, for actors to unpick and play with and, and, and uh, productions to make decisions about or not make decisions about actually uh, is sometimes uh, important. Anyway, we need to dive into act two. Um, I'm sure more confusion will reign, but the A plot is much more linear and much more straightforward. And so hopefully it should, uh, should work. Um, Elizabeth, are you, uh, you're still with us? Yes, you are. Fabulous, because uh, this is about to return. Uh, so act two, scene one, uh, enter Roberto. Um, we've got torch bearers, there's lights. Uh, we've got uh, Cardinal, Isabella, Lady Lentulus, uh, Abigail, Theus, etc. Lots of people come in. My grave Lord Cardinal, we congratulate and zealously do entertain your love that from your high and divine contemplation, you have vouchsafed to consummate a day due to our nuptials. Oh, may this not you knit this individual Gordian grasp of hands in sight of God so fairly intermixed, never be severed as heaven smiles at it by all the darts shot by infernal Jove, angels of grace, Amen, amen, say to it, fair lady widow and my worthy mistress, do you keep silence for a wager? Do you ask a woman that question, my lord, when she enforcedly pursues what she's forbidden? I think if I had been tied to silence, I should have been worthy the cucking stool ere this time. You should not be my orator, lady, that pleads thus for yourself. And enter a servant. My lord, the maskers are at hand. Roberto, give uh, give them kind entertainment. <laughs> Some worthy friends of mine, my lord. Uh, unknown to me, too lavish of their loves. Bring their own um, welcome in a solemn mask. I'm glad there's noblemen in the mask with our husbands to overrule them. They had shamed us all else. Why? For why, I pray? Why? Marry, they had come in with some city show else, hired a few tinsel coats at the visit makers, which would have made them look for all the world like bakers in their linen bases and mealy visards, new come from bolting. I saw a show once at the marriage of Magnifico's, Magnificero's daughter, presented by Time, which Time was an old bald thing, a servant. "'Twas the best man. "'He was a dyer and came in likeness of a rainbow "'in all manner of colours to show his art. "'But the rainbow smelt of urine, "'so we were all afraid the property was changed "'and looked for a shower. "'Then came in after him, "'one that, it seemed, feared no colours, "'a grocer that had trimmed up himself handsomely. "'He was justice and showed reasons why.' And I think this grocer, I mean this justice, had borrowed a weather vane's balance from John Justice of a conduit, both which scales were replenished with the choice of his ware. And the more liberally to show his nature, he gave every woman in the room her handful. Oh, great act of justice. Well, and my husband come cleanly off with this, he shall ne'er betray his weakness more but confess himself a citizen hereafter and acknowledge their wit. For alas, they come short. And enter the mask, because we're all looking forward to a mask. Uh, we have Ruggiero, uh, Mendoza, uh, Clara Diana. Uh, we have uh, Mizaldus and Torchbearers. Uh, we can infer that they're probably all wearing masks because it's a mask. And uh, they deliver their shields uh, to their several mistresses and um, they speak variously uh, uh, to them in the dialogue that follows. Uh, and Isabella uh, asks someone to explain what the hell is going on, which is what always happens in a mask. Good, my lord, be my expositor. The sun setting, a man pointing at it. The motto, senso tamen ipse calorum. Fair bride, some servant of yours that here imitates to have felt the heat of love bred in your brightness, but setting thus from him by marriage. 
He only here acknowledgeth your power, and must expect beams of a morrow sun. Lord Bridegroom, will you interpret me? A sable shield, the word bidua spes. What the forlorn hope in black despairing? Lady Lentulus, is this the badge of all your suitors? Aye, by my troth, my lord, if they come to me. I could give it another interpretation. Methinks this lover has learned of women to deal by contraries. If so, then here he says the widow is his only hope. No, my good, lo good my lord, let the first stand. Inquire of him and we'll resolve the doubt. He'll resolve what, the doubt. What's here? A ship sailing nigh her haven, with good wear belike, tis well ballast. Oh, this your device smells of the merchant. What's your ship's name, I pray? The Forlorn Hope? No, the Merchant Royal. And why not Adventurer? You see no likelihood of that. Would it not fain be in the haven? The word ut tangerem portum. Marry, for aught I know, God grant it. What's there? Mine's an azure shield. Marry, what else? I should tell thee more than I understand. But the word is, out pretio, out precibus. Aye, aye, some common counsel device. And so we'll just pause there to uh, explicate what's going on. So they all, they're all sat there and these, their, their various mass figures hand them a shield and they have to try and read and interpret what's written on them. Um, so uh, there's some really nice banter in, in there. I quite like, uh, um, what's your ship's name? The Forlorn Hope. I, I, I think that's a, that's a lovely one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, the adventurer and, uh, and detail there and then shade about um, Latin. Um, oh, it's a very common phrase. Um, it's um, a common bit of Latin there, uh, even though I've actually uh, not passed any of it. Um, so, yeah, it's it's interesting. And, you know, th this sense of an audience sitting down and just having a, a natter before the show begins as well with uh, Abigail's long speech. And uh, uh, that's that sort of odd oddness and just wondering do you put these people actually in the audience for this bit um and sort of have them over the seats and just yeah and and, and things because i'm wondering how dynamic this could be i'm not sure the actual scale of this playhouse at this time uh, how much room they've got to play with so i'm, I'm curious about that um and uh, and options for how we might do it today thoughts on the room uh, before we move forward i'm only briefly pausing rachel uh, uh I think you could do that with putting them in the audience and um, having them talk because I, I don't think they're talking before the performance. I think they're just talking all the way through it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's both. I think they're, they're talking before it officially starts and then they are literally talking through it, you know. So these maskers are standing there holding a shield and they're going, oh, what's this read? Oh, what's this you know, and it's like, can we get on with the show now, please? Lynn and then Helen. I have a question for Helen. Now, I, I have this memory that a grocer does not mean the same thing in the early modern period as it does now, but I can never remember what a grocer did. Help me out. A grocer engrossed. That is, he bought wholesale and sold retail. But it didn't kind of need to be gross. Way. But that's why it, mostly it was what we now call grocery. Okay. Um, but the the thing that I was most struck by was the uh, Abigail's quite vicious description of uh, the masks put on um, by by guilds. I, I mean, the idea of the, the 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 man with his his personating justice with the scales but they were scales from his grocery. And he managed to put in quite a bit of product placement by handing out a handful of fruit and nuts to every lady in the audience. Um, I, I, and she is, she is really fierce. Now, what that says about who the audience for this play was, I'm not sure. Because if it's being played to these people, it's very insulting. If it's a, more of a court performance, then everybody could laugh at middle-class pretension. 
Mm. Uh, Eric. I was going to say, it's interesting that the, the mosque is in this scene. It's like, it feels very early. Um, but then again, we've seen the, sort of the other one. I think it was the fawn where he had the, 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 the mosque take place like this early in the, in the action. And we were it basically had like, you know, uh, it was a whole party for the whole thing. But we still didn't get what was going on to like act four. Rack five. <laughs> yeah, so, it's the just, different yeah. the different dramatic functions of a mask. Is it to close the action? Is it a, a reason to have chaos? Uh, usually, for lots of people to get br brutally murdered, or is it something to move the plot forward by uh, making it a fulcrum where various people can meet? Um, and it seems to be following that sort of logic. Uh, we need to read read on um, so that we uh, don't get behind. Um, and you get to do some dancing. I expect to see some wonderful fancy footwork. For here, the maskers. Take the women and dance the first change. Fair widow, how like you this change? I change too lately to like any. Oh, your husband. You weary his memory, you wear his memory like a death's head. For heaven's love, think of me as of the man whose dancing days you see are not yet done. Yet you sink a pace, sir. The fault's in my upholsterer, lady. Oh, th uh, thou shalt as soon find truth telling a lie, virtue abroad, honesty a courtier, as me turned recreant to thy least design. Love makes me speak, and he makes love divine. Would love could make you so, but tis his guise to let us surfeit, ere he ope our eyes. You grasp my hand too hard, i' faith, fair sir. Not as you grasp my heart, unwilling wanton. Were but my breast bare and anatomized, thou shouldst behold there how thou torturest it. And as Apelles limbed the queen of love, in her right hand grasping a heart in flames, so may I thee, fairer but cruel. Well, sir, your visor gives you colour for what you say. Grace me to wear this favour. Tis a gem that veils your eyes, though not the eagles. In exchange, give me one word of comfort. I marry. I like this wooer well. Heals wind's pleasure out of the stones. And we now have the second change. I don't know if the dancers actually change who they're dancing with. We'll find out in the dialogue. However, at this moment, Isabella falls in love with Rogero. I was going to do a sound effect for that. Um, I, I, I didn't get around to it. Um, you know, just... Uh, just uh, uh, they, When they change, um, uh, they... Uh, uh, now, is it that she falls in love when they, uh, when they, uh, they speak? or uh, when they uh, just sees, who knows, I'm not sure. Anyway, Isabella falls in love. Change is no robbery, yet in this change thou robbest me of my heart. Sure Cupid's here, disguised like a pretty torchbearer, and makes his brand a torch, that with more slight he may entrap weak women. Here the sparks fly, as an Etna from his father's anvil. Oh, powerful boy my heart's on fire and unto mine eyes the raging flames ascend like to two beacons summoning my strongest powers but oh too late the conqueror already opes the gate will not ask his name you dare put it into my hands sounds do you think i will not and thus tomorrow you'll be secret servant all that i do I'll do it secret. My husband goes to Morano to renew the farm he has. Well, what time goes the Jake's farmer? He shall not be long out, but you shall put in, I warrant you. Have a care that you stand just in the nick about six o'clock in the evening. My maid shall conduct you up. To save mine honour, you must come up darkling and to avoid suspicion. Sounds hoodwinked. And if you'll open all, sweet lady. But if you fail to do it. The sun shall fall the day first. Tie this ring fast. You may be sure to know. 
Oh, you brag of this. Now you have brought me to the bay. Hoxley's mask. Would were done. I might to my apothecaries for some stirring meats. Methinks, sir, you should blush even through your visor. I have scarce patience to dance out the rest. Ah, oh, the worse my fate that ploughs a marble quarry. Pygmalion, yet thy image was more kind, although thy love not half so true as mine. Dance they that list, I sail against the wind. Nay, sir, betray not your infirmities. You'll make my husband jealous by and by. We will think of you and that presently. The spheres ne'er danced unto a better tune. Sound music there. And the third change ending, um, so the dance of the third change, after which the ladies fall off. Music. They don't fall off the stage, <laughs> they just move on. It was music that he spake. Gallants, I thank you, and begin a health to your mistresses. A fair thanks, Sir Bridegroom. He speaks not to this pledge. Has he no mistress? Would I might choose one for him. But maybe he doth adore a brighter star than we. Sit, ladies, sit. You have had standing long. And now, um, yes, uh, Rogero at this moment decides to show off. Uh, sorry, am I editorialising? I don't know. He dances a Lavalto or a Galliard, depending on the ability of the, uh, of the actor. And in the midst of it, falleth into the bride's lap, but straight leaps up and danceth it out. <laughs> Bless the man, sprightly and nobly done. What? Is your ladyship hurt? Oh no, an easy fall. Was I not deep enough, thou god of lust, that I must further wade? I am his now, as sure as Juno's Jove's. Hymen, take flight and see not me. Tis not my wedding night. And ex exit Isabella. So, bit orcs. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, Isabella, having a lovely time and falls in love. Awkward, awkward moment. Um, how, have, have, how are we feeling about Isabella? Uh, Aliki, uh, you've been reading the text, um, you know, about what her dialogue is doing. What's go what's going on with Isabella? Well, I mean, she told us her previous husband had her locked up tight. So um, I think she's just delighted to, to see good looking men and is suddenly going, oh, he's cute. Oh, no, he's cute all the time. Yeah. And it's 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 made even worse for Rog uh, Rogero showing off that way and falling into her lap i mean falling into her lap i mean she touched him who knows he probably smells nice Ooh. oh yes so 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 much so much um uh, other thoughts before we move on we're still midway through the scene um no nobody's got anything eric <coughs> feel betrayed <laughs> yeah i mean dude you're still in the room um <laughs> Well, what I didn't get was the bit about I'll find him a mistress, which was kind of like find him a dis did she mean like find him a distraction? Is that the what uh, is going on? I think she's volunteering. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He doesn't have a girlfriend. Oh, I can find one. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So uh, yeah, don't invite single people to your your wedding. Don't, 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 just don't, just don't do it. Uh, uh, anyway, um, let us move on midway through the scene. Uh, exit Isabella, the Cardinal, Roberto, various people are still there. The bride departed, discontent it seems. We'll after her. Gallants, unmask, I pray, and taste the homely banquet we entreat. And at this point, exit Roberto, the Cardinal, people carrying the lights, various other people, presumably some tidying up goes on, uh, but the rest are still on. Candid a ring nose, I beseech thee. Come, widow, I'll be bold to put you in. My lord, will you have associate? And exuant this, uh, Lady Lentulus, Abigail and Mendoza. Good gentlemen, if I have any interest in you, let me depart unknown. Tis a disgrace of an eternal memory. What? 
the fall, my lord? As common a thing as can be. The stiffest man in Italy may fall between a man or woman's legs. Uh, would I change places with you, my lord? Would it had been my hap? <laughs> what cuckold laid his horns in my way? Signor Claridiana, you were by the lady when I fell. Do you think I hurt her? Oh, you could not hurt her, my lord, between the legs. What was it I fell with all? A cross point, my lord. Cross point, indeed. Well, if you love me, let me hence unknown. The silence yours, the disgrace mine own. And exuant uh, Clara Diana and Ms. Saldus uh, enter Isabella with a with a gilt goblet and just happens to meet Ruggiero. Having some muting issues. Sir, if wine were nectar, I'd begin a health to her that were most gracious in your eye, a yet Dane, as simply tis the gift of Bacchus to give her pledge that drinks. This god of wine cannot inflame me more to appetite, though he be co-supreme with mighty love than thy fair shame. Zounds, she comes to deride me. That kiss shall serve to be a pledge, although my lips should starve. No trick to get that visor from his face? I will steal hence, and so conceal disgrace. Uh, sir, have you left naught behind? Yes, lady, uh, but the fates will not permit, as gems once lost are seldom or never found. I should convey it with me. Sweet good night. She bends to me. There's my fall again. And exit Ruggiero. Mm. He's gone that lightning that a while doth strike our eyes with amazed brightness and on a sudden leaves us imprisoned darkness lust thou art high my similes may well come from the sky anna anna into anna madam did you call servants servants what are they like <laughs> Follow yon stranger. <laughs> Prithee learn his name. We may hereafter thank him. And exit Anna again. Oh, I don't. Is he not a god that can command what other men would win with the hardest advantage? I must have him. Or shadow-like follow his fleeting steps. Were I as Daphne and he followed chase, though I rejected young Apollo's love, and like a dream beguiled his wandering steps, should he pursue me through the neighbouring grove, each cowslip stalk should trip a willing foe till he were mine. Till then am his thrall, nor will I blush, since worthy is my chance. It is said that Venus with a satyr slept, and how much short came she of my fair aim. Then, Queen of Love, a precedent I'll be to teach fair women, learn to love of me. Speak, music, what's his name? Madam, and enter, enter servant. We're doing well. We're doing well, servant. I'm late, you all. It's, it's awful. It's awful. Enter Anna. Madam, it was the worthy Count Rogero. Blessed be thy tongue. Worthy count, indeed, the worthiest of the worthies. Trusty Anna, hast thou packed up those monies, plates, and jewels I gave direction for? Yes, madam. I have trussed up them that many a proper man has been trussed up for. I thank thee. Take the wings of night, beloved secretary, and post with them to Pavia. There furnish up some stately palace worthy to entertain the king of love. <laughs> Prepare it for my coming and my love's. Ere Phoebus' steeds once more unharnessed be, or ere he sport with his beloved Thetis, the silver-footed goddess of the sea, we will set forward. Fly like the northern wind, or swifter, Anna, fleet like to my mind. I am just of your mind, madam. I am gone. Exit Anna. 
So to the house of death the mourner goes that is bereft of what his soul desired as I to bed. I to my nuptial bed, the heaven on earth. So to thought slaughters went the pale Andromeda bedewed with tears when every minute she expected gripes of the foul monster and in vain bewailed the act of her creation. Sullen night that look with sunk eyes on my nuptial bed with ne'er a star that smiles upon the end, mend thy slack pace and lend the malcontent, the hoping lover and the wishing bride beams that too long thou shadowest, or if not, in spite of thy fixed front, when my loathed mate shall struggle in due pleasure for his right, I think to my love and die in that delight. Exit Isabella. So, uh, the mask has ended with, you know, the party's breaking up a bit um, and uh, awkward dance. I mean, Roger, really, he, he, I think he's mortified, oh, isn't he? A bit about this falling over into the, you know, oh, God, this was so... And, and then he's really not sure how to take Isabella when she does the, some quite severe coming on um, <laughs> uh, that he thinks she's she's mocking him um, and he's not really sure how to take that. Um, uh, Lois. Yeah, I think it's important that he keeps this mask on. I mean, the others, I think, all take their masks off and he doesn't want to because he doesn't want anybody to know who he is. And that's what, how he's trying to get out. Mm. I mean, that's why she has to send after to find out. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, though I quite like is it. Is it the detail where Rogero is basically saying, uh, what was I, uh, I fell with or what's, what point in the routine did I slip? Or, uh, is that what he's saying? I think it is. Um, mm. I quite like that of just going, well, I was, where, I don't want to do it again. Can I get any notes, um, Francis? Yeah, I feel with this scene after a very baffling, confusing beginning that um, I'm a much sure ground here. Um, with uh, you know this woman uh, going after this uh, man, even though we don't know how he's going to react, my sense is he's um, he's not going to be too happy. Well, we shall see the the, the happiness quotient. Um, yes, the A plot is is relatively linear. Um, it's you, the the B plot has you know these this this pantheon of couples um uh who are in in uh, opposition and not in opposition and um i think the visual element is really really important there that 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 would really help us mm. uh, other thoughts before we go into the final scene for the session eric um is um is Marston referring back to himself again because he does mention the malcontent <laughs> in 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 her speech uh, in Isabel's speech, uh, and um, yeah, also I was just thinking that this is a bit like sort of, well, she's the female version of the rum tum tuck. <laughs> like you know, when 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 she's in a situation, she wants to be out of it, and when she's out of the situation, she wants to be in the situation. That kind of. Well, actually, I don't know if she wants to be out of her present situation. I think she just wants to also be in the, into the next situation. I'm not sure what uh, uh, Aliki does. Does she reference her current husband at all? Well, she does. Uh, she says uh, her, she loathes her marriage bed. Oh. And and compares him to uh, her, the monster and herself to Andromeda. I stand corrected. Uh, yes, Eric, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, continue with that uh, that uh, that uh, that comparison. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Let's go into Act Two, Scene Two. I think this is a much more straightforward scene. Um, uh, we have Theus. We have Abigail. Um, later on, we'll have Ms. Aldous, and I think that's it. Enter at several doors, Abigail and Theus. Um, they may have some letters. They might have some propage. Theus, you're an early riser. I have that to show will make your hair stand an end. Well, lady, and I have that to show you will bring your courage down. What would you say? And I would name a party, saw your husband, caught, kiss, nay, almost go through for the whole. How, how, what would I say? Nay, by this light, what would I not do? If ever Amazon fought better or more at the face than I do, let me never be thought a new married wife. Come, unmask her. 
to some admirable creature whose beauty you need not paint, I warrant you. Tis done to your hand. Would any woman but I be abused to her face? Prithee, read the contents. Knowest thou the character? Tis my husband's hand. And the love letter. But for the contents, I find none in it. Has the lustful monster all back and belly starved me thus? What defect does he see in me? I'll be sworn wench I am of as pliant and yielding a body to him, e'en which way he will. He may turn me as he list himself. What? And dedicate to thee. I marry, here's a style so high as a man cannot help a as as a man cannot help a dog o'er it. He was wont to write to me in the city phrase, my good Abigail. Here's astonishment of nature, unparalleled excellency, and most unequal rarity of creation. Three such words will turn any honest woman in the world whore, for a woman is never won till she know not what to answer, and beshrew me if I understand any of these. You are the party, I perceive, and here's a white sheet that your husband has promised me to do penance in. You must not think to dance the shaking of the sheets alone, although there be not such rare phrases in it. Tis more the matter. A legible hand, but for the dash, or the he as short bawdy parenthesis as ever you saw to the purp as ever you saw to the purpose. He's not left out a prick, I warrant you, wherein he has promised to do me any good, but the law's in mine own hand. I ever thought by his red beard he would prove a Judas. Here am I bought and sold. He makes much of me indeed. Well, wench, we were best wisely in time seek for prevention. I should be loath to take drink and die on it, as I am afraid I shall, that he will lie with thee. To be short, sweetheart, I'll be true to thee, though a liar to my husband. I have signed your husband's bill like a woodcock, as he is held, persuaded him, since naught but my love can assuage his violent passion, he should enjoy, like a private friend, the pleasures of my bed. I told him my husband was to go to Murano today to renew a farm he has, and in the meantime he might be tenant at will to use mine. This false fire has so took with him that he's ravished afore he come. I have had stones on him all red. Dost know this? I too well. It blushes for his master. And she points to the ring. Now my husband will be hawking about thee anon, and thou canst meet him closely. By my faith, I would be loth in the dark, and he knew me. I mean thus. The same occasion will serve him too, they're birds of a feather and will fly together. I warrant thee, wench, appoint him to come. Say that thy husband's gone for Morano, and tell me anon if thou mayst not his heart blood spring for joy in his face. I conceive you not all this while. Then thou'rt a barren woman, and no marvel if thy husband love thee not. The hour for both to come is six, a dark time, fit for purblind lovers, and with cleanly conveyance by the nigglers our maids, they shall be translated to our bedchambers, your husband into mine, and mine into yours. But you mean they shall come in at the back doors? Who? Our husbands? Nay! And they come not in at the four doors, there will be no pleasure in it. But we too will climb over our garden pails and come in that way. The chases that are in Venice will stray for a good turn, and thus wittily will we be stowed, you in my house to your husband, and I in your house to my husband. 
and I warrant thee before a month come to an end, they'll crack louder of this night's lodging than the bedsteads. All is if our maids keep secret. Mine's a maid I'll be sworn. She's kept her secrets hitherto. Troth, and I never had any sea captain boarded in my house. Oh, go to then. And the better to avoid suspicion, thus we must insist. They must come up darkling, recreate themselves with their delight an hour or two, and after a million kisses or so. But is my husband content to come darkling? What? Not to save mine honour? He that will run through fire, as he professed will, by the heat of his great love grope in the dark? I warrant him, he shall save mine honour. I am afraid my voice will discover me. Why then you had best say nothing, and <laughs> take it thus quietly when your husband comes? Aye, but do you know a woman cannot choose but speak in these cases? Bite in your nether lip, and I warrant you, or make as if you were whiffing tobacco, or pooch like me. God so, I hear thy husband. Exit Abigail. Farewell, wise woman. Enter Now bins my vengeance mount high in my lust. Tis a rare creature, she'll do it in faith. I am armed at all points, a rare wibbling, to be revenged, if you yet gain pleasure in it, one height above revenge. Yet what a slave am I? Are there not younger brothers enough, but we must branch one another? Oh, but mine's revenge, and who on that stream must be a tyrant ever in extreme? Oh, my wife Tice got my breakfast ready. I must into the country to my farm I have, some two miles off, and, as I think, shall not come home tonight. Jack! Jack! Get my vessel ready to row me down the river. Ready? Make haste, sweet girl. And exit Miss Aldous. So, there's one full shipped away. Are your cross points discovered? Get your breakfast ready. By this light, I'll tie you to hard fare. I have been too sparing of that you prodigally offer voluntary to one to another. Well, you will be a tame fool hereafter. The finest light is when we first defraud. Husband, tonight, tis I must lie abroad. And they exit, or she exits rather. Uh, so, um, yeah, we. Uh, I think Lynn brought this up earlier. Uh, what do you know? We have the husband's intention, but here we have the the wives' intention, as they are uh, clearly friends who uh, share each other's correspondence and um, and uh, have have a um, a planning meeting. And I, I've got to say, there are some some event management uh, meetings I've been to have been very disorganised, but this one does uh, does uh, have all the planning planning uh, things uh, d down down uh, fairly, fairly well organized here uh, thoughts on the room who would like to uh, leap in as it were on uh, on on this particular uh, setup uh, tomara i just point out that you need to workshop uh, workshop this so much to catch all the innuendos <laughs> There were innuendos. I must have. I. 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 I must have missed some dialogue in between them. Um. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's a lot. There are it's a lot. Terrible. There's at here. least three layers of them throughout. Yeah, they. They keep. They keep. Uh, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Um. Uh. Lois. Yeah. Uh, someone raised a bit about the redhead prejudice. I really wondered if that's where the stuff about his being a Jew comes from. I mean. Uh, Judas is often depicted with a red beard, and uh, maybe that's what's going on. Maybe the guy actually does have a red beard. Otherwise, I don't see what the point of that line is. Uh, unless it's just simply to reiterate that uh, that that divide that the, the the characters are making about different different people. Um, but yeah, it's 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 another one where we need yeah. to, uh, to make a, take take a line on uh, in a production. Um, uh, other thoughts? Anyone want to leap in on uh, on, on uh, dig into any of the innuendos? Uh, Lynn? Well, this scene really is awfully satisfying for anyone who's 
I mean, it's really funny anyway, uh, even if you only get a fraction of the innuendo and even if you aren't <laughs> familiar with the, uh, with the tropes. But for somebody who's read and seen a lot of early modern drama, I am just really enjoying the sort of double bed trick, like <laughs> the, the classic bed trick, and we're going to kick it up a notch. <laughs> we're going to have not just one guy sleeping with the right woman and while he thinks he's sleeping with the wrong woman, we're going to have <laughs> which <is> really <laughs> uh, like he's been holding out on me. I got a fix for that. Listen to this. <laughs> Yeah, and it's this thing of you know what if what if my husband doesn't want to come, uh, Darkling, and it's just you know he says he'd run through fire. I think he'll he'll <laughs> he'll, he'll cope with a, a groping about in the dark. Um, I mean, there's uh, yeah, there's so there's so much in here that uh, that could be played with and uh, workshop. Someone was putting in the chat this 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 question about uh, uh, what to do with some of the uh, the shorter scenes and monologues and things of just going. You know, this this is a nice two hander to to be played with um, and. Uh, and uh, in, uh, enjoyed on uh, certain levels. Uh, other thoughts uh, anyone wants to throw in uh, on this scene? Uh, Ms. Aldous makes a token appearance. I think we can, you know, just just so we can like, snigger at him, presumably. Uh, sudden silence from the room. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm liking the dynamics of this. And actually, once we've tuned into it, and I think I say most of the problems with this are ones that are solved in performance. Um, it's, uh, you know, once we got past that initial uh, wedding uh, crash, uh, it, it, it's it's clarified itself quite, quite interestingly. Um, where do we think it's going uh, as we head towards final thoughts? I mean, especially for those who don't know the text. Uh, where, where, what direction, you know, uh, we're not at the interval yet, but um, or where we might put an interval, but uh, you know, we've got a lot of setup here, um, and we're uh, only one third of the way through. Uh, Rachel, then Lynn. Oh, I forgot, um, the I forgot what I wanted to say about that last scene, which was just that Murano is where they make uh, glass, I don't think they have farms there, and they're in Venice, so I. I think this is a, a weird little joke that was made. I have no idea what it's supposed to mean, though. Uh, Helen, did you want to go? Early modern, that? early modern playwright geography strikes again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Francis. Well, I was just going to say maybe there was some farmland um, on Murano at the time, just as there was farmland in New York at one time. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, Helen. Yeah, farm doesn't always mean farm. Mm. Uh. <laughs> no, no, oh. I mean, I mean, if you ha you can have a farm of the customs hmm. at Murano, it, oh. it, it's it's uh, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't always mean farm, but it yeah, probably the does here. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, uh, Alan and then Lynn. The, there was a reference which I can't remember the precise one, which described it as a type of farmer, but it actually read to me more more like it was something like the Gong farmer. You know, the guy who, who took the sewage away from the city. Hmm. Yes, he's called a Jake's farmer, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, I mean effectively, he, he's being characterised as, as the guy who's making a living out of shifting the shit. Maybe there's a sewage farm on Murano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Maybe uh, there's a glass uh, connection. Maybe, I don't know, it's used in de gla dying glass or something. Mm. <laughs> Those uh, things were. Yeah, uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I do feel this is this is one that's gonna. There's gonna be a lot of work in rehearsals to to, to unpick everything <laughs> and then make the decision of how much do you think you're going to get across to the audience, um, what quietly gets cut, what gets said really quickly, um, <laughs> and what bits you want to land on um, uh, so that we get that it's dirty. Uh, Lynn, I was going to say what I'm enjoying about this so far is that you is the is the very fact that i don't know where to have it that um the uh the we get pretty invested i get pretty invested in abigail and tice's friendship they you know they talk about what good friends they were and how they kept, told each other all their secrets and now they're married to guys who have been feuding for generations what are we going to do about that oh we'll just talk over the back fence 
So, you know, you really like them. And then it looks like, oh, no, man, the men are going to fuck that up for them because they're going to seduce the other guy's wife. But then they they seem to be pulling it out because they can because the, the friendship takes priority and they tell each other the truth. So you're hoping that that's going to work out OK. Um, but then you've got the A plot, the nominal A plot of the countess. You can't seem to, to decide who she desires and it is called a tragedy so that may just really really go south um but on the other hand you have this b plot looks like it's a comic plot so is that telling us that it's not really a tragedy that it's somehow the 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 the, the love tragedy of the of the countess is going to work out somehow it's so hard to predict um how this is going to all shake out in the end. And I'm really liking that. Yeah, uh, uh, avoiding spoilers, Lois. Yeah, uh, I mean, when a play is called The Insatiate Countess and uh, when someone's depicted like Isabella, people are quite likely to say this is a very misogynistic work. And clearly somebody else thought this might happen too. So we've got two women who are exactly the opposite, uh, who, who seem to be really nice uh, women trying to keep their husbands from behaving like idiots. And then we've also got this other widow who is a kind of counterpart to the insatiate countess. And we don't know what's going to happen with her. I mean, she's being wooed by, by somebody who clearly is using Isabella as a kind of example. Look what she's doing. How about, you know, you giving in to me? So, uh, you know, nicely patterned. Yes, yeah, so we haven't talked about um, uh, Lady Lenchlove um, um, at all, um, uh, really. Uh, and yeah, that contrast is really important, I think, there, that, you know, there are different um, routes out of, out of widowhood um, and different, you know, she's clearly not interested as a character at all. Uh, you know, there's someone trying to woo her and, yeah, I'm quite content to be... Um, where I am. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes as well. So yeah, there's all these contrasting threads. And yeah, that question of genre. I mean, someone someone looked into the beginning of the, the title page and went, oh, this is a tragedy. How how many plays have you done with us uh, to know that the <laughs> uh, genre, that that level of genre questioning is uh, is still is still uh, to be uh, to be uh, uh, doubtful. Uh, right, we need to go to final thoughts. Uh, go around the room, uh, see how we're uh, we're taking in the play so far. Uh, thoughts about uh, staging, uh, things to tweak, things to, that we've really enjoyed, uh, things that we haven't, um, and uh, yeah, and 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 all the usual all the usual things. Uh, Elizabeth, do you have any? Fi how's it landing for you? Oh, I'm really enjoying this one. I was thinking, oh, no, we, once we've done a bit of master and we'll get sort of the same narratives again and again and the same characters, but we don't. I love the, vi the, vi the vividness of the characters in this. And I really like the mask, um, the mask that was in the text with its different changes. I thought that was really lovely. I thought that this would come across on stage so beautifully put together really ornate and i'm quite excited to see how the narrative turns mm. helen any final thoughts yeah i don't really see any male characters who are admirable in it oh come on rogero is fleet of foot <laughs> yeah he falls over in the game. well he's human he can uh yeah. Okay. Ruggiero may be a pattern card of gentility and, and, and all the rest of it, but he, he doesn't. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm struggling to find a, 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 a moral center, a, a, a male character that, 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 that has anything going for him at all. Um, uh... But I mean, who needs them? <laughs> Again, I'm going with Marston as a general rule. Struggling to find a moral center uh, feels like a good maxim. We're, we're collecting them today. I'm, I'm yeah. liking these. Um, yeah. uh, John struggling to find a moral center, Marston. Uh, Lois, any final thoughts? Um, well, I'm wondering whether Mendoza might turn out to be something like that. I don't know. Um, I mean, when I remember the play, perhaps not, but I think he was trying to 
reconcile those two factions at the beginning and in a kind of jokey way as well, which would sort of fit with Marston's general idea that, uh, you know, comic lighthearted people are uh, more likely to be right than incredibly serious people. <laughs> uh, but that's about all I would think at this point. Otherwise, I agree that the uh, the men are not exactly stunning examples of anything, but it's partly that the ones that Isabella likes uh, come and go so quickly anyway. Mm, yeah, and, you know, and we, we haven't really had, um, you know, we've had the, the, the men have been in the heat of arguments. You know, we haven't necessarily had interiority to a lot of them, uh, apart from a few dodgy asides, yeah. um, in the way that some of the other characters, we've had a, a, a moment of... Uh, you know, where they can talk, have a conversation. I don't know if the men have really been conversational yet in that sense or yeah. internalised. I might be a bit unfair. They've had a bit, but um, just in the way the, the play's been slanted. Back to Lois. Yeah, Clara, Clara Diana's uh, long soliloquy about how he was going to, uh, you know, get uh, uh, his rival's wife with child, with a bastard to make his old age miserable. That all sounded rather like the, the other Mendoza in the... Uh, uh, the malcontent, you know, just planning really horrible things. And uh, they, they're all so awful that they start becoming funny after a while. I mean, mm. somebody who everybody has his fault and mine is being wicked, you know. Yeah. Uh, Francis, any final thoughts? Yeah, quite a few. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of prologues, but I feel this play could use one. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, just to just to explain the animosity between um, Cloridiana and uh, Mazel, whatever his name was. See, I had to write it down um, and uh, and explain who's married to who. Um, uh, but um, I like the play more and more as as this session has gone on. Uh, once I got my bearings and um, I agree with Elizabeth the uh, the characters are really well drawn and and I like the um, I mean I particularly like the characters of uh, Abigail and Thais um, what else what else oh yeah and also as Elizabeth said uh, the mask I mean I thought the overlapping dialogue in during the mask was masterfully written um, and I also, in terms of staging, I think it would be really interesting to do this kind of as uh, some ghastly middle class with, <laughs> with all the bad outfits and hats and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we we didn't. Uh, I mean, we we touched on it, but yeah, that the way the mask of the the, the dancing uh, couples move around is, uh, you know, it's nice. It's uh, it keeps that scene alive and it keeps our focus moving from place to place. And uh, uh, yeah, there's there's all sorts of really nice things. I'm, I'm liking the interesting uh, modern class approaches to early modern drama. Um, uh, Alan, any final thoughts? I'm struggling with it because I think, as we said the female characters seem to be quite well drawn and do seem to have got some sort of background. The male characters all seem to me to be very much one dimensional. Um, and I get the feeling again with, as we've had with other masters and stuff in the past that there is just about enough plot there to keep the double entendres going. And I put in the chat, I think actually he may have been commissioned by the local rugby club or whatever the in-period equivalent would be. Because it, it's got the feeling that it was written for a boozy set of chaps, um, you know, after a night on the uh, hogsheads of uh, whatever beer, wines or spirits were available. Uh, Bryony, final thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I don't like to say too much now in the early sessions on Marston because it gets me every time. Um, but yeah, there's some stuff that we've come to know and love, like these these really well drawn characters, um, even when they're not given like the ones that we haven't seen that that much of the the interiors of. They're still caricatures enough that you can you can imagine who they are and, and glean some things about them even if it's more surface kind of stuff um 
yeah, I, I expect to be tricked in tomorrow's session and then delighted the day after. Yes, we shall see. Uh, uh, we never know where it's going to go. Um, so, Eric, any final thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I enjoy being wrong about these, especially when it's like Marston. It's kind of fun to sort of go, yes, this is totally going to happen. And then it doesn't, but then something better or weird or, or whatever happens. Um, I have no idea where it's going to go, but I do. I, I, I do like that the female characters are more well are better drawn. Just like he 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 does that thing of having, um, I think like with kid, like we noticed with kid, where you've got those kind of really well drawn characters that are kind of even if they just say one line, you kind of can visualize that they have a whole internal world. Whereas the guys are kind of guys; <laughs> they're, they're very low key kind of. Mm. Uh, Lynn, any final thoughts? Oh, the, I, I kind of already articulated that, that, uh, you know, it's the not knowing what to really what to expect. I mean, I, I, Eric put it really well. I enjoy being wrong about what's going to turn out. <laughs> and uh, and that, that this sort of elaborate patterning that uh, Lois referred to is also very aesthetically satisfying for someone like me. And having that and these sort of evocative little portraits of characters at the same time is really a treat. I enjoy it. Uh, yes. Um, uh, Rachel, final thoughts, please. Um, I agree with uh, what a lot of other people are saying. The characters in this, um, they're, they have so much depth and there's so much that, you know, in the staging of this that you'd get to play around with. And I feel like uh, production, there would be, so, there's so much to discuss here. Um, and we still have two more days of this play. Um, so I'm sure there's even more to discuss. I think I'm gonna hold off on my opinion, like on more than that, because yeah, he does uh, tend to trick us a lot. And, you know, he likes to misdirect people, I think. Um, the anti-Semitic part, I think that in a production you could talk about it and that part might still be navigatable. Um, you know, if you have something in the pamphlet to talk about the historical context of why these are hap why this is happening or why they're talking about it and what's like going on um, in parallel to this fictional talk about, about this going on, just to put it in context. Yeah, and and I mean, I th I think it uh, ho we'll we'll hold on 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 that until we finish the play because there's there's a lot of questions. You know, what's it doing in the play? Um, what's it what's it function? You know, um, what is what is the it trying to say? And then what are we trying to say? Because it might be you know, if it doesn't really turn up again, then then I might go the opposite direction and say, well, that's just some lines to quietly cut. Um, but if it turns out to be something that's structural, but it could also get worse. Um, and that's always the, the, the slight fear as we head towards the final section, uh, session of suddenly things leaping out at us going, <laughs> we're going to ruin your prospect of producing this in the future. Um, so, yeah, but it's, it's, uh, there are elements of this lay and we've already mentioned, you know, that there are uh, elements here that how do we read uh, elements that could read as misogynistic, but are they being more clever than that? And are they doing both? Are they being clever about misogyny and also being misogynistic at the same time? And what do our, what does our production do about that? Um, so again, uh, the next two sessions will hopefully clarify uh, to a degree where we go with that. Uh, Tamara, welcome back after a, a, a long disappearance. Uh, how, uh, any final thoughts from you? I mean, I I enjoy the innuendos. <laughs> um, I no, I I enjoyed the setup, and I I have no idea where this is going. Really, um, genuinely, I don't I don't know where this is going. Um, but yes, I I I have to say I'm I'm enjoying it quite a bit, even even though you know misogyny and all of those things. But it's yeah, it's. I don't, yeah, it's it's definitely something that I want to see in a second look session. 
at the moment, mm. that opinion might change depending on how they end it. Ah, it's always about the ending, isn't it? It's it, endings are hard, and actually, it's a number of plays that just slightly, uh, you know, don't don't stick the landing. Uh, a leaky final thoughts. Uh, I'm really enjoying it too. I hope the friendship between Face and Abigail continues to uh, get the the better of of their husbands. Um, I'm not sure I find it all that misogynist. I mean, Isabella's worst fault is she thinks various men are hot and wants to have sex with them, which, you know, shucks, what a terrible thing. Uh, and the other women are pretty, pretty virtuous. Um, I would really enjoy seeing some sitcom sound effects applied to this. That's my only staging note. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we've got, uh, say, a long way to go uh, over the next couple of sessions to uh, find out what's going on here. Uh, all that remains is to thank all these wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading. Thank you very much, everyone, and goodbye. You must not think to dance the shaking of the sheets alone. <laughs>